Ladies and gentlemen, call your parents, call your teachers, call your siblings, call your friends. I am about to do the Lewis structure for SO2. The first thing I like to do for Lewis structures is count the number of valence electrons. Oxygen is in group 16, and each oxygen brings six electrons with it. There are two of them, so that contributes 12 electrons total. Sulfur is in the same column or group, and so it also brings six valence electrons with it. In total, six and six and six give us 18 valence electrons. Now, some kids wonder which atoms go in the center. Often, it is the atom with the lowest electronegativity. In this case, that is sulfur. The way that I think about it is which atom can make the highest number of bonds. Oxygen prefers two bonds. Sulfur can have anywhere from, I think, two up to six. Sulfur can make more bonds. It goes in the center. So there's my sulfur in the center. Here are my oxygens on the outer bits of my molecule. I like to connect them with bonds to start off. Those two bonds costed me four electrons. One, two, three, four electrons already in my structure. I need 18 total. I like to fill my outer atoms next. Two, four, remember that. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I stopped at eight electrons per oxygen because of the octet rule. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around each oxygen and it's full. It can't hold any more electrons. But I've only got 16 electrons here total. So I need to dump my other two, after all, I do need 18 on the central sulfur. I'm almost done, but I have to make sure that all the other atoms satisfy the octet rule. This oxygen does, it has eight electrons around it. This oxygen does, it has eight electrons around it. Let's see if my sulfur has eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's not eight, that's only six. I need two more. The method for getting that to happen is to take two electrons for one of the oxygens and creating a double bond so that those two electrons are shared. This sulfur now has two, four, six electrons in bonds, two lone pairs, or sorry, two electrons in this lone pair. That gives eight total, and this sulfur satisfies the octet rule. Now, I do want to point out that there are formal charges on these atoms. Well, this atom has a formal charge of zero. Six valence electrons minus the four dots minus the two lines gives me a formal charge of zero. Six valence electrons minus the three lines minus the two dots gives me a formal charge of positive one on my sulfur. And six valence electrons minus six dots minus one line gives a formal charge of negative one on this oxygen. There's no way around that. We've already satisfied the octet rule. We would be breaking the octet rule if we moved any more electrons around. But I do want to point out that the two electrons that we moved from the oxygen could have just as easily been brought by the other oxygen. We call these two structures resonance structures. And the actual structure of SO2 has bonds that aren't quite single and not quite double. They're more like one and a half bonds each. It's a hybrid structure that is halfway in between this one and this one. That's not to say that the structure is flipping back and forth, but the actual structure has bonds that are stronger than single bonds, but weaker than double bonds between the sulfur and each of the oxygens. Anyways, this is your Lewis structure here. And if you've learned about resonance, then you're going to want to include this structure as well and draw one of these double arrows in between the two. It should probably be centered, but I wrote my formal charges in here without thinking ahead. And that's your Lewis structure for the neutral SO2 gas phase molecule. Bam, who's your daddy? I am. Best of luck.